How's it going, everybody? What's good? What's good? What's good? We are live talking about Dune Part 2. And there we are. That's, hello. That is us. Hello, hello. I'm in charge of the music. <laughs> I have the power. You, you can lower it a little if you want I did to. already. Okay, cool. Yeah, I did. Hi. Oh. Hi, everyone. Hi. Let me know if the music's okay. Uh, Achara looks much better than Jabby in the thumbnail. Well, I, you know what? I think for whatever reason, my face and Zendaya's face blended really well, but I love Jabby's expression, and I agree with Wood. The Jabby Chalamet hair in the thumbnail looks chef's kiss gorgeous lovely why can't he do that in real life because he does not have a team of people and all the time in the world i, I think that hairstyle takes some, some time and tons of hairspray it does yeah it, it does that um requires some hot tools yeah um additionally so additionally uh, i'm usually wearing headphones and so the headphones are a preventative measure from looking perfect <laughs> So, <laughs> Polo Nye, uh, thank you for you, the first super chat of the day. Just want to acknowledge. Oh, no. Where is it? it there it is. Where Polo Nye. Thank you, Polo Nye, for the first thank super you. chat of the day. Thank really you. Thank you. being here. And why? What? No. Polo, we're not going to play the June 2 soundtrack. I would love to because, like, that soundtrack is amazing and uh, so we actually went yesterday to watch it a second time at 7 a.m. Us and like a nearly full theater of equally dedicated and crazy people. Um, and it was great. And then afterwards we were hanging out with our friend and because he watched it with us as well. And then he had the soundtrack on because how can you not? How can you not after you, you know, watched it? It's like, you got to go back and, and listen to the soundtrack. But yeah, that would just rain down a bunch of copyright issues. So no, that, that's not happening. Uh, that it would. Yeah. Copyright issues galore. Why are all these songs with lyrics? I'll just skip to the next one. I did. Um, fittingly, we have Dune behind us. <laughs> Dunes. Dunes behind Dunes us. Dunes behind us. So, uh, what should we talk about first, y'all? You guys can, uh, we can either decide ourselves or y'all can chime in and s tell us what you want us to cover College first. College United said, is it a good movie? It's amazing. Is it a good movie? Jabby has already said that this is probably going to be his favorite film of 2024. Yeah. And honestly, I am inclined to agree. I know we're just in March and it's still very early on in the year, but it's hard to imagine any other movie coming out this year that is going to top this in terms of story, visuals, <laughs> like everything. It's, it's an incredible movie. And I was thinking about this yesterday because watching it again, and this time we watched it in IMAX. So the first time we watched it just in like regular widescreen format. And then this time in IMAX and I was just like everything is so seamless it feels timeless and it's so strong that I feel like this movie is going to be a classic and in 30 40 years time when a new generation of kids watches this movie they're going to be like dang this was this is really good yeah so still good I'm doing two things to celebrate uh Dune Part 2. Yeah, what's that? I have my Christopher Walken t-shirt. Ah, uh, very nice. And look what I'm wearing. Can you read that? Oh, <laughs> that's funny. The Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb. Yeah. <laughs> spice, because it's all about the spice. I guess Furiosa is the one other movie that can contend with it, like, th that actually has a chance at besting my experience with Dune Part 2. It's the only other one. Um, and so I... I don't know, man. Like, I don't know how you top Mad Max, but then, like, you know, you watch Dune Part One, and you're like, how do you do better? And then they did Dune Part Two, and so yeah, it's entirely possible that you know, Furiosa might just sweep me off my feet in a way that I don't see coming. Well, that's true. Cause, well, you did love Mad Max Fury Road. It's one of my favorite movies of all yeah. time. Yeah. So I guess that's another potential contender. So anyway, um, yeah, let's start off with just talking about, I guess, the how it measures up against Doom Part 1. For me, almost in the first, uh, I'd say, 20... By the way, this is a spoiler talk, so if you haven't seen Doom Part 2 yet, you should probably bounce. Um, so right away in the first 20, 30 minutes, I think that I had realized that I was already appreciating it more than Doom Part 1. And you've heard me say that before. Yes. It was just that there was something about it that kind of just 
knock my socks off. Not, not that the first one didn't, but th there was something about it that was just capturing my heart in a way that I was even better than the first one. And I think it's because of the romantic angle being more present, you know, and I'm a romantic at heart. And yeah. So that they had that and then they had the comedic part of it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's like it's hitting all these things that Doom Part 1 didn't do for me. You know, because the first one was a lot of setup. You know, we're, we're getting to know, you know, Timothy Chalamet's character and Oscar Isaac and how all that relates and this this laying of foundation and the adventure really kicks off in Dune Part Two. Um, well, here's the thing, right? I I think yes, all of that. But Dune Part One for me was also very crucial to setting up the world yeah. because there's a lot of politics and stuff going on, and you know, like that's the most important thing to me. It's like, yeah, the characters and the interactions too, but like the background of where they are at sure. and why they need the spice and and all of that. Like it feeds into the story really, really well. And so, yes, I agree. The first one probably feels like a slow burn to many people, but for me, I, I, I still can't decide whether I like the second one more because the experience of watching Dune part one, like, knocked my socks off because for a long time I hadn't had that experience in the cinema like with the music with the visuals and the story and like I love sci-fi and fantasy so it just like you know it had all of those things that just makes me really happy because I'm instantly transported to a, a world that feels so different from the one that we live in, you know. Mike Hill. Timothy Chalamet gave a commanding performance. Hope he gets Best Actor Awards. He and was amazing. Michael. I want to talk about why Kristen isn't here. I'm biased, but something about her falling asleep during a movie is great. <laughs> Lol. Did she fall asleep during a movie? I think she gets sleepy sometimes. Like, if, if she doesn't love the the movie, she might get a little sleepy sometimes. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I have, well, I've, every time I've reacted with her, there's just been so much energy that that hasn't been a thing. I know. That's why I'm like, <laughs> I want to react with her. Uh, speaking of, she hasn't watched Dune Part 1, and I was going to watch it with her, only because I just really want to watch the movie again, and... I know I've seen it like five times already, but um, I wonder. If, I would do it with her as a friend. Uh, I wonder if Timothy Chalamet is going to have a baby with Anya Taylor Joy's character. In <laughs> Are you crazy? And Joseph Wyatt responded accordingly. So yeah. Um, as long as the new one isn't world building again, then I'm psyched for the second one. No, it's not. It well, you're definitely you haven't seen it, but yeah, it's not. It's there's a little bit of world building. Obviously, it's an extension of the first one, but. There's so much more action. My Michael, I would tell you to bounce because uh, you don't want to be listening to what we're going to say in this conversation. We're going to ruin the movie for you. So, but I appreciate you being here and being a supporter of the channel. So, uh, let's see. Leo, yeah, but Bennett Jesuits? Oh, the Bennett Jesuit. The, the Bennett Jesuits. Um, the There's a lot sisterhood. of incest? No. So why is he saying Bennett Jesuits then? Well... That's spelt wrong, um, but it's the sisterhood. The Benet Jesuits. <laughs> they yeah. might, they're a tasty ass street, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. No, but the, the, the Benet Jesuits have been um, playing with the bloodlines for like 10,000 years sure. or whatever. And so that that's part of like the whole story. Like I, after watching June part two, I had to go back and just do a little bit more reading up on the, the I always say this wrong what is it the something hazarak the quasit hazarak uh, jod la anyway. wand jabby looks like the spice got him really high uh-huh why did no one try to save the baron because everybody hates the baron <laughs> like even even his own family are like yeah screw him um, you know the fall of the 11th says i think for me i would love to see this director handle material from properties like godzilla or even maybe a pacific rim film i don't think that's his style no that's not his style but maybe that would be interesting because it's not his style yeah. but yeah denis vinov is he's more of a slow burn kind of guy i suppose i would i would love to see his hand on something like jurassic park like a new jurassic park film then that would work because mm. Jurassic Park, the first film, was actually a slower start. You know, it's not until like an hour in that you see the T Rex. So still, Spielberg wasn't rushing anything, unlike what you see today. Yeah, I feel like he could handle that property really well. Although that being said, if he if he approached Godzilla or Pacific Rim, like I don't know that he would mishandle it. I think he could actually do a pretty good job. It would just be a different vibe. Yeah. 
right. Um, I can't say anything else because I don't want to ruin anything for anyone. Uh, Johnny, both, uh, for both, Denis Villeneuve or Christopher Nolan? Oh, God. What does that mean? Choose one. Denis or oh, Christopher. Um, I think that if I, if they both put out a movie at the same time, yeah. I'd be more curious about the Christopher Nolan film, but I'd be more likely to like the Denis Villeneuve film. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, that's really hard because I love movies from both of them. Yeah. Although they both have equally had a few duds for me as well. I can't decide. What's the dud from Denis Villeneuve? Um, Did we, we didn't love Blade Runner 2049. I didn't love it, but I don't hate it either. Like I, I want to rewatch it. Yeah, actually, like I, I wouldn't call that a dud. I would, I would actually, I would actually buy that on 4K Blu-ray, but I, just to have as a screensaver more than I anything. I don't know. I think I would choose Denis Villeneuve over artistry, but I think Christopher Nolan. A lot of his movies are. Perhaps more broadly Inception, entertaining. Interstellar. Yeah, I love Inception. Um, Memento, The Dark Knight. Like, there's so many films of his that I, are just among my favorite movies in general. Yeah. Um, and didn't even know. If, I, I mean, the first three, the first uh, two th thirds of Sicario, I love. Um, and then Dune Part One, Dune Part Two. I actually appreciate Blade Runner 2049, even though I wouldn't elect to watch the movie necessarily right away. I would. I enjoyed Prisoners, uh, for what it was. What else did he do? I, I love Arrival. So Arrival, I, I, yeah. think, I think they're about even. Yeah. Anyway, Knobbathor. Hey, guys, hope you are well. I'm going to bounce, though, because I haven't seen the movie yet. Cool. Thanks for the support, man. Michael. I don't mind spoilers. Spoil me, Jabby. All right. You were warned. We're, we're about to get in. And no, we didn't get the popcorn bucket. Um. It, it looks highly questionable. <laughs> There's still time. It looks like a raging asshole. <laughs> <laughs> like, when I heard about it, I was like, why would anybody want that but okay mm -hmm. yeah A according to the books alia should already be born but she's still in the womb during the second part ah that is interesting though like i do like the introduction of her character that way because ever since jessica took the what was it the, the poison from the worm the water of life she she started being able to talk to her mother and like i because I haven't read the books, so what I did was I kind of cheated, and I, I I've been reading the graphic novels, mm -hmm. um, but it it hasn't even caught up to there yet. Like it barely got through like the second half of the second movie, so I'm still catching up, right? And so I don't really know all that much about her. So right now I'm like, okay, I get that she loves her brother, yeah. and that she also you know has a lot of ideas about what ought to be done, but. I still don't know whether she's like gonna be good or bad. Do you know what I mean? And maybe that's the point. It's mysterious to say the least. Um, was it, the V asks, was the soundtrack new or a lot from the first film Dune? I would say that it is definitely a lot of new stuff. I would, I, I'm preferential to the first film's soundtrack more than the second film. That's the one area where the first movie is definitely better for me is the music. The second film has great music too. Yeah. It's just like having watched it twice now, I'm like, I think I prefer the first soundtrack for sure. Like it, it's way more. I, it's the the lady whoever's yeah, singing. Yeah, the vocalist yeah. is incredible. She, we don't really get that much of her back in this. Yeah, but it's a different theme, you know. It's like a different point in the story. I would say that if if when you if you haven't if you didn't, I would say that when you watch Doom Part Two again, you should watch it with the best sound theater possible. Like, I, th I think the sound is it's a character unto itself. Yeah. Even if I didn't like the music as much the second time around, the sound is its own character. And it's like, you, you got to give it the best listening experience possible. Um, let me see. So, uh, what did you think about Austin Butler? I thought he tried too hard to look like a psychopath, but I didn't find him menacing at all. The final duel was underwhelming, too. I actually liked him quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I, this is my first experience with him properly, that, where I'm aware of him being who he is, etc., and uh, I thought that he gave a lot of nice, subtle looks, like when um, Timothy Chalamet enters the, the spherical spaceship thing, mm -hmm. where Christopher Walken is and, and Skarsgård and all of them. He walks in, and uh, uh, Austin Butler kind of gives him a look, and it's this nice, subtle look of like just curiosity and uh, a hunger to fight him. You know what I mean? Like, because he loves combat, he yeah. loves conflict, and so that. 
His character, I thought I liked what he did with his character. I thought he did a, a nice job. I was I was actually impressed because I was prepared to be like, this guy's probably overrated. And then <laughs> I actually was like, whoa, he's actually really good. I, I was pretty happy with his performance. M my issues with him aren't his fault. My issues with him uh, have to do with the fact that I never felt like he got a proper fight so that we could really feel fear when he fights Timothy Chalamet. Because I was never afraid for Timothy Chalamet. Um, only because I wanted to see him wreck a bunch of like skilled people that like, you know what I mean? Like, and just take him out real fast so that when he goes up against Timothy Chalamet, you're really scared for him. It's like, we haven't seen Timothy Chalamet do that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I suppose in the arena fight, if they'd had, had the Atreides fighter who was not drugged, if they'd had had him be able to like nick him or something yeah, like exactly. that to draw some blood, exactly. then that might be like, oh that's a little scary uh, but then he like totally kicks his ass after that then you'd be like oh okay yeah he's pretty formidable but i mean i think that that fighter did give him a run for his money it was just Absolutely. a shame that he was like starved and not at his peak ability because if he was maybe that atreides warrior would have completely kicked his ass well i'm imagining this has something to do with the book because in this in the in the arena when he's fighting you know um i forgot who it was that asks skarsgård the lady who seduces him i think asks like why are we doing this and he goes oh it's just for show he's not gonna really get hurt blah yeah. blah blah it's like take that out don't have it just be no. for show like have it be that they're not drugged he wants a fight no but like i i think i think that is like showing the culture right it's the culture of the harkonnens they are like a a brutal people as uh well it's not Gurney as brutal said. if they're drugged right but it's like it's all for show because he's nobility of course they don't want to hurt him but then his uncle does something that's just like kind of right. messed up right which so, is he's like i want to see who okay. you are exactly so why not take that all the way have all three of them be be like at their best well then you wouldn't have the the thing in the movie where it's like but this is they're drugged though i didn't care about that honestly i was like that can go kick rocks i just <laughs> i want to see him fight i want to see him fight some dudes that are formidable and that was the one opportunity we were gonna get and it was wasted on like these people interfering like even when the asian dude was fighting him he got caught in the shoulder by one of the guys with the, with the long hat yeah i'm just like what the f why like l because you know? it's like they're they're babysitting him that's their job he's not meant to get hurt but he he actually wants to be like a proper fighter i think a long time ago there was this pokemon episode where this guy was like all he, he just like had crazy book knowledge on pokemon uh -huh. and then he went up against ash ketchum who had street knowledge on pokemon yeah, yeah. and got his ass handed to him yeah and it's like you, you know yeah you learn in the streets bitch and so i'm like this is if he's always spoiled in the fights with weak ass fighters how how would we know how is he any good how well, would that's we... why they had the guy who was not drugged we can go on and on about this that's not good enough for Anth for for jabby koe so i almost okay. gave away my government name there uh let's see anyone that would have tried to save the baron would have been killed they were already defeated sure but also... he had to go he had to go <laughs> Yeah. That's a Kevin Hart reference. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Did either one of y'all get pop the popcorn bucket? No, no we already like covered no. that. But I want to, even though it looks like an asshole. I, I, I would actually like to. Um, according to the books, all I should order, we read that. Uh, I also had a joint before watching part two. I thought when Anya Taylor Joy showed up briefly, it was suddenly becoming the new Furiosa movie. I was like, I was a little bit disappointed that. I mean, obviously, she should go to the premiere. She worked on the movie. It's mm -hmm. a great celebration. It's a fun party, whatever. But it's no. just like, why, though? Because you just no. spoiled that you're in the movie. No one knew. I was so surprised because when we watched it, the premiere hadn't happened yet. So I was like, oh, my God, she's playing his sister. Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire did not go to the No Way Home premiere. Why? Exactly. Why? Exactly. So Anya Taylor, baby, ruining it for everyone. Yeah. Uh, or are we? Is it just me, or is Dune completely Middle East inspired? 
Lizan al Gaib is a prophet, spies his oil, empires are Western countries fighting over it, and they do Muslim prayers. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I definitely got, I, I felt that sense, yeah. Yeah. For sure. And, and I think that's why I, at the end of the movie, and I don't know if I was just feeling extra emotional yesterday, but the second time watching it and the ending, I was devastated. And because the I wasn't able to get a ticket sitting next to my friends. So I was literally sitting alone next to these random strangers. And I'm crying and no one else is crying. And I'm just like, <laughs> and then I walk out of the theater and Jabby and Ricky are there. And I just walk up to Jabby and I like give him a hug. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like sobbing. And then they're both laughing. They're like, what happened and then this other random guy just looks at me like this girl is deranged why is she crying so well, much he's not wrong <laughs> that's true but i was just so sad because not only is it like so sad about uh paul and chani because of their love story and he, him having to do the thing that he has to do because he's a freaking duke and he has to think about everyone else and he's like, I'll love you until like the end of, until I stop breathing or whatever he says exactly. And then she's like, oh my God, I can't be with you anymore. You betrayed me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, not only that, he's literally having to, to take all these people into a war where he knows because he has sight and he can see he can see all of the devastation that is going to happen and the millions of people that are going to die but he has to do it anyway because that is the path oh my heart broke for him i was just like Wah. did anyone else feel that way or was it just me <laughs> I, I i think that i would have felt it more if zendaya wasn't mugging as much I, I realized, having watched it a second time, that her performance was actually really good. She's really good. She's really good. It's just that in the last 45 minutes of the movie, she does a lot of, she does a lot of this. And I'm just like, yo, calm your eyebrows, lady. Listen, girlfriend has an intense face, okay? She does that all the time. Okay, do you know who else does that all the time? I think you know him. Listen, listen, Linda, listen, okay? Uh, what am I doing here? Why is this like this? Okay, I guess this is the same shit. All right, cool. I got two buttons for the same thing. Anyway, um, oh wait, I know what it is. Oh god. Um, sorry, it's a technical thing. Gotta fix it real fast. Oh, that's not it. It's okay. There we go. Boom. Okay, okay, okay. Um, there was a moment in the movie where um, it, 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 Timothy Chalamet was gonna read. What's his character's name? Paul. Paul. Well, Paul was <laughs> the gonna easiest read. Easiest name. Paul was gonna. Well, yeah, he got like eight names in the movie. Forgive Paul, me. Paul Usul Maudib Atreides, okay? Too muchy. <laughs> but, the real ones, no. Yeah, no, but the, if, there was a, there was a moment in the movie where where um, Zendaya calls him by his new name. I'm like, that shit ain't flying yet. You, he just got that name. How can you just immediately start calling? What if I told you my my new name is Gabubu? And like, <laughs> like how quickly would you adapt Out of to respect, that? Gabubu, I would call you oh, that. Oh, please. Gabubu. Yeah. Like, even 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 Paul was like, eh, that sounds weird. <laughs> like, you remember his reaction in the movie? He was like, I'm not used to that yet. As in, I'm like, how can she be used to saying it already, you know? But anyway, um, there's a moment where he, he has to go ride the worm, right? Yeah. And everyone's kind of mocking, like, come on, put on a show, pick a good one. Yeah. And then it's a huge, it's, oh, but, oh, I sorry, love that. hold on, I jumped the gun. I was trying to say Zendaya. So the girl, her friend goes, pick a, pick a big one. And she looks over at Zendaya and Zendaya's just like, like mad. Her look there was perfect. Not this like mugging stuff. It was like, she just looked d d staring daggers at her friend. Like, yo, shut the fuck up. Like, you're my boo. Like, you're, <laughs> you're about to get it. Like, stop. I'm worried here. You're supposed to hold my hand or something. You know? Her... Yeah, that was great, though. And then when the worm pops up and it's like the biggest one they've ever seen and they're yeah. all just like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and Stilgar is just like thinking, uh, maybe you don't you don't need to show up. <laughs> like, yeah. you, we can pick another one. It's okay. John Lawand. Achara and Zendaya are both as beautiful. Thank you. Chuck Bratowski. Uh, did you watch this movie that I asked you to watch? Um, not yet. But yes, we have. I mean, it's not out yet. And let me go to the. Where are we? What am I doing? What are you doing? There we go. Daddy? That's what I want. Okay. Uh, let's see. So is it me? Or da, 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 the also, congrats to Jabby on your short movie. Congrats to Char for her role in her upcoming film. 
Um, thank you. And so you can compare the directors. They have different styles. Yes. You can still call, compare them. It doesn't mean it's, it's hard a, to know. pick one, though. One of the aspects of the movie that took me by surprise was how real it looked, given that each scene was CGI um, was utilized. Did not feel at all a scene with CGI in it. I was amazed. I agree with you 99.9%. .9 okay. What's the 0.1%? Well, there's, um, well, it's actually like 99%, but like there's, I can't remember what it was, but there was something in the film where I was like, that looks like CG to me. And that was one of two things. The other thing was the baby. Like there was a moment where the baby just looked like a fake baby to me. And I'm like, what is this? But I think what's so <laughs> American cool. sniper, like the baby, the baby <laughs> in the belly. Like, I mean, I know it's like, we don't, like I just wouldn't have shown it, I guess. Like the like you full on see like the eyes and everything. I'm like that look like a CG baby. Like <laughs> I don't like it doesn't look real to me. But I think for the most part, probably why it works. And I like I don't know all of the ins and outs, but I think because they used a, a a good amount of actual like real locations and as much practical as they can, right? And so combined, it just kind of makes it seem really real. And seamless so you're like fully immersed in the world of the movie and you're not kind of going oh that was weird you know what i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah well exactly i mean because it, it just looks so photoreal um th th that's what i was trying to wrap my brain around like okay so he didn't use green screen according to ricky he used orange screen or something or gray, tan. tan screen yeah they said, so i don't know how that functions but i guess it's just a reference point where you dip the visual effects in and rotoscope people out but like there th that moment when they have the first attack on the tank right because they're all breathing in the sand mm -hmm. with the little tubes yeah and the rat comes up the they, rat excuse you the dune rat <laughs> the and, dune, it's Maudib. it's the desert mouse come on that's not a rat have some respect he points you know the who way. You're talking to. He points the way. And so anyway, he they go shoo shoo, and then the little desert my deep rap <laughs> rat goes away, right? And and so then they bust out the sand and they start attacking the tank. That whole sequence was awesome. I even though it doesn't make any sense, I loved it. I love the shit out of that scene. It doesn't need to be in the movie, but I'm glad it's in the movie because it was so thrilling and exciting and yeah. exhilarating to watch. And my one of my favorite shots, it might be my favorite shot in the film, it was when Zendaya's running across the screen like all happy and stuff. Because they shot the thing down. And then, yeah. and then the, the debris just comes crashing down. So like, cool. And that exemplifies one of the great things about this film, which is just the way they do scaling, where you can see a character in the foreground and some epic stuff happening in the background. They did it again right before Paul Muhadib was gonna, what's his name? <laughs> Just pull, it's fine. Okay, so when when he's about to ride the the, the worm, uh -huh. and he's like walking along the frame, and he's trying to decide where to stand, and you see the worm coming up in the distance. It's like, and it's huge. That kind of scaling we don't see very often in film. It's often ruined with close-ups these days, or like weird inserts. It's like the movie just allows things to to be, and you just process what's happening on screen. Yeah, I, that's what I loved about it. And so, anyway, uh, Paul sees. Futures that Chenny's dad was actually fades. What? Hold on. Where are we? Uh, Chenny acting like that was weird. Not in the book. I need to. Yeah. Oh, Johnny. Chani. 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 Yeah. It's not in the book. I need. I don't. I don't know. I'll take your word for it. The Stillgar character. Oh, that's how you say his name. I thought his name was Stillborn. <laughs> so the Stillgar character was supposed to be funny in the beginning, but I feel he started sounding unintentionally funny by the end. I don't know. He was he was funny though. I liked him. His his comedic relief in this was yeah. was great. Like his just the way he said things and and watching it again with like more of an audience the second time around. I really liked that people were just laughing at his stuff. Like Yeah, I I thought he was funny where he needed to be. Yeah. Um you needed that though. So, uh, also I can't lie, I audibly burst out laughing when Timothy Skyrim yelled at the old lady and launched her back. <laughs> Uh, I like that part. That, I, that was a great moment for me because um, in the first film, she was controlling him. And so, you know, turn, oh, yeah, turning yeah. tables have turned. And so... He's like, silence! Yeah. She's like... When he uses the voice. She I says, love the voice. Abomination! Yeah. I'm like, shut up, lady. You're you're out here. You and the freaking <laughs> Bene Gesserit trying to like breed bloodlines so that you can get your Kuzat Hadarak and like 
Oh, just because he, he might be it, you're all like, you're an abomination. Because it came early. Mm -hmm. Shut up, dummy. Um, yeah, that, that, I like that moment because I wanted to see her put in her place. So she was for the moment. Uh, do you? Yeah. Oh, it, it's, it, it's. I. Do you know what? Hmm? I know that we didn't really see too much of her, but I really liked uh, Florence Pugh as the princess. She's very intriguing to me because she seems like someone who is really smart mm. and obviously like she's been trained by the the Bene Gesserit as well yeah and yeah I'm, I'm gonna be I'm curious to see how her relationship with Paul unfolds and whether you, they'll end up being like allies and good friends do you think that Ch uh, Johnny Chani? I thought he was saying Johnny the whole movie do you think Chani will stab Paul in the next movie? Like that vision from part one. Um, I think that Paul has a lot of visions and there are possible futures. Actually, Brother Johnny yeah, says exactly. it right here. Um, so apparently it was actually fades. I don't know if that's a, a lot of people get stabbed in the movie. So how did you all feel about the fight at the end? That, oh, the Chani. Oh, he's talking about the stab. Yeah, because there was a part as well in this one where they showed the knife. And then the, it, I thought it was the same knife that he ended up stabbing Fade with, or that Fade ended up stabbing him with. Either way, I was like, oh, there's a knife. Yeah. Um, for, and, uh, I feel like I'd have to watch many more times and watch part one again. That's what I love about it, you know? It's like so rewatchable for me, at least. Like, Immediately after the first time we watched it, I could have just gone back in and watched it again. And then when we watched it with Ricky yesterday morning, he was like, I wanted to just go straight back in and watch it one more time. Um, I don't know what's, what's if Paul's any of you name? guys felt the same. Huh? What's Paul's name? Atreides. But what's his, his new name? Desert Rat. Maudib. M-A-U-D apostrophe D-I-B. Like that? No. But that's close enough. Maudib? Like... I said M... Okay, that's fine. What did you say? M-A-U-D apostrophe capital D-I-B. All you had to say was there's two Ds. <laughs> it would have been good. Yeah, I put a dash instead of an apostrophe, but that's fine. Oh, apostrophe. Yeah, it's fine. You don't listen to me. It's cool. Okay, I, I heard dash. <laughs> um, Where are we? I'm trying to catch up to y'all. Uh... Miss many soundtracks in the movie. Paul sees possible futures. We got that. I wonder she has tons of practice and gives Tom Holland that look all the time. I think Zendaya has a fantastic side eye. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, Rebecca Ferger. I, I don't know, man. Like, I think that she overdoes the look sometimes. I think that the look she gave right before Paul rides the worm, that's what she needs to practice. That had everything. It's just, it's less, you know? Sure. It's less and it's perfect. She needed that. She needs to just... On, I would if I was if I was Denis Villeneuve, I would have just repeated that. I would have CG'd that look all over the place, because <laughs> at the end of the movie, even as the, as the camera's pushing it on her face, she's like doing that look again. And I'm like, I get it. You're about to ride the worm, but you've done that. Like, I understand you have feelings, but like you're showing too many of it. Like, let it just be in the eyes, smiles. You know? Okay. What is it called? It is called a smile. Yeah, yes. that. Um, Stilgar was amazing. He's too humble to say he's the prophet. Well, I don't know if he's the prophet. He's definitely he's definitely like uh, the champion of the prophet. Rebecca, well, I just really like Josh uh, Brolin's looks sometimes when he's just kind of observing what the heck's going on because he's like the white American in the room. Oh yeah, just trying but to... you know, Stilgar is not Josh Brolin, right? No, I know. Okay. <laughs> no, but he because he's saying Stilgar was was the. I just it made me think of Josh Brolin. Oh okay, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I just didn't know where yeah. you were going with that because of the bounce. It was like those are the two father figures in the movie. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, and so uh, I wonder... Oh, someone earlier commented about Timothy Chalamet's speech. Uh, yes. I, I want a second whatever you were saying. I thought that was great. I, I wonder if she has tons of practice against... Okay, that, Rebecca Ferguson was the MVP of the movie. For Hope she gets nominations for award season. She was great. Like, uh, just, just as Jessica, you know, and how she's trying really hard to protect her son and protect her family, her unborn child and all that. And she has to make choices and she's constantly just like rolling with it and evolving with it. And 
I mean, you could argue that she's the one that she set Paul on the path that he is on now, you know, and mm -hmm. he listened to his mother and like, look what happened. Yeah. So, uh, oh my God, what a surprising, what does that mean? The day that I watched the movie, you guys did the live stream. What does surprising mean? Surprising. Oh, sur oh so yeah. surprising. Just read between the lines, Debbie. Uh, I just came in, but there was a question about the reaction to the brother's son. I thought you liked it a lot and it suddenly it stops. Um, yeah, just, you gotta be careful with YouTube. That's the, that's the, what it comes down to. What um, do you mean? Uh, I don't want to get into it right now. It's just analytics stuff. I, you gotta be careful with YouTube. So, that's why it stopped. Don Vaca, personally, I wasn't impressed by Butler's performance at all. He was fine, but utterly predictable in my opinion. Well, what would you have liked? That's a great question for you. When you say predictable, is it just that you feel like the character should have been a little bit more wild and crazy? Um, I don't know. I think they could have also moved a bit faster with Paul learning the ways of people. I really got into it when it was focusing on a strategy of joining the people together by being the Messiah. I think that the I, it was I think it was fine. Any any faster I think would have been too fast because there was a lot of montages in the movie. You know, to, to just move things along. Yeah. I, th I think it was just right. Um, could it could they have gotten to the Messiah thing quicker? Yes, but then you're lopping out a lot of story. And you're out lop lopping out a lot of development. And that the, the adventure is Paul having to decide that he's going to do the thing he doesn't want to do. Exactly. That's the story. It, that, that That's the story this time around. He doesn't want that conflict because he, he's aware of something that's ahead. And so his whole thing is like, empowering the people to to do their thing and not go south you know yeah exactly i mean it's just kind of i think it's just really interesting the way that the movie and i imagine the book addresses like the idea of you know how much choice you have because like it feels like a balance between it was that always his destiny or were were there manipulations in place, like obviously from his own mother, from the Bene Gesserit and all of that to make him who he is? And so he has to go that way? Or is it like, is that the best choice because that is the best way for them to uh, free, free June, to free Arrakis, you know? Like mm -hmm. all of that stuff is just really, really intriguing to me. And I, I it breaks my heart that he has to do a thing that is just so big and so difficult and give up his own personal happiness I, in I, order to yeah. save everyone, you know? Yeah. I mean, even if all we ever got was Dune Part 1 and Part 2, I feel like these companion films are so great as, like, one long-ass movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because you, you just look at what happens along the way. It's like the you're kind of spreading out the structure a little bit, but the end of Dune Part 1 is kind of the hero loses it all. Like, he lost everything. Yeah. He, everything. His whole family. His whole family, yeah. his home, everything. And he had to find a new home. And he had to figure his way out again. And then he ended up getting the opportunity to get revenge on the people that wronged him. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, as just like a, like as, as a two-part film, so to speak. I know that there's more story to tell, etc. And that's not really the point, And there's more to go. But just that on its own, I thought was really, really nice. And him losing Zendaya at the end of the film was was a nice balance but you needed that because otherwise he just wins everything sure you know yeah. um so let's see uh we have a super chat <laughs> uh oh no we covered that yeah I, we covered, I, that. I covered yeah. that okay so let me come back to this uh where are we yeah i can't lie butler's character felt like ronan from gardens of the galaxy looks great but just gets wasted by how underused he was i was a little bit disappointed that he did die like we were introduced to him i was like oh fade rotha i like you you're interesting you know like i thought he was gonna be the, like the new villain yeah like, you know take over for scars guard but they killed them both i was like oh okay didn't see that coming yeah so who's the villain in part three well he's got to fight the the rest of the the like various other dukedoms so we just haven't been introduced to them yet. we haven't been introduced to them that okay. yet because so far we've only seen two and there's five other kingdoms or whatever yeah uh, let's see. I was pleased that Anya, Anna Taylor Joy was only in it for a few minutes. I really can't stand her. Her face generally makes me cringe. I like Poor her. girl. So many people say that about her face. She What's wrong with her face? Her, her big alien eyes and. I think she, I think she's got a fascinating look. I yeah, think, I think she's she's very very ethereal. Yeah. 
I I think she's fine. Like to be all to be honest, like she's perfect for Dune. You think about her ethereal look. It yeah. fits in well with that universe. Uh, I can't lie, Butler's character felt like Ronan from Gar. Yeah, okay, I read that. Dune changed the science fiction landscape and literature forever. I wonder what the films will do. I yeah, I think the films have like really set the bar for me. It feels like the Dune movies are like the Lord of the Rings for this generation. Because remember, I just remember when the Lord of the Rings came out, and I was just like, oh my god, blown away. And they're sure. so epic, and and like I feel like they changed the the landscape for fantasy films in sure. such a meaningful way. Yeah, and I, I think Dune is doing the same for this generation. I don't know, man. Um, it's possible, but you get a lot of imitators, and it's just not quite the same. Like there was a movie called Aragon that came out after Lord of the Rings, and it's like. Not quite my tempo. Great you know, work. even after Lord of the Rings, you had the Lord of the Rings uh, prequel trilogy, and it's just like, it's not quite... The, 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 the one called The Hobbit? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I don't call it The Hobbit, because The Hobbit is, is, is a book that's this thick. Yeah. It's very thin, and he blew this up into... It's a prequel trilogy. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so... No, but The Lord of the Rings, like, amazing trilogy, you know? I agree with you about that. Um, it's just that I don't know that it's really going to create like a whole new set of films inspired by it. Yeah. Because like, how do you replicate that? Sure. You, like, I don't know. It's anything is possible. Um, I think that if anything, you're going to see people inspired by Dune. Like those stories come to fruition 10, 15, 20 years from now by kids who are watching it right now. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's going to be so inspirational for this yeah. generation. So, were we, oh, loved it. Okay. Well, I'm in disagreement with 44% of you. <laughs> I thought it was cool emotionally. I loved it for that. It's just that the the fighting itself bugged me the way it was shot. Um, Why? Go into it. Okay. So, I've watched it twice now, yeah? And there was like fighting early on in the film as well. And I, I'm studying it and I'm going, okay, there are moments where it shines, but there's a lot of moments where people are just kind of waiting. And when I see it, I can't unsee it. And it really bothers me where I see a character who's like, okay, like in Braveheart, for instance, there's this, this sequence when um, uh, William Wallace realizes he's being betrayed by Robert the Bruce. Mm -hmm. And he sees like these, these guys riding off and in the background, you see an English guy and a Scotsman fighting, and like, what are you, we're still going. It, like, and it's just like I can't unsee it. It's there forever in my brain, burned in, like sure. like trauma. And so w there's instances in Dune Part Two where there's they have these long takes, and I can see characters waiting or putting their arm there to get blocked. And I'm like, that's not how, that's not what you would do in a fight. You're gonna try to mess them up, and the other person's gonna stop you. And so I guess a lot of it stems from there's a lot of rehearsal that went into play mm -hmm. and the actors could not divorce themselves from the rehearsal part of choreography because there's a transition you have to make just like with scene work yeah. where you're studying your lines, you get them down pat and then now you got to do it for real and it's got to feel right. real with a readiness to improvise should something change on the fly emotionally. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and so... These actors are so good at their shit when it comes to lines, dialogue, blocking, movement in general. But when it comes to fight scenes, they don't know how to emotionally improvise or how to like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not, yeah, they're not martial you. artists. I get you. Yeah. Because like the blocking, learning it is just like learning the beats and learning where to hit exactly. And like you learn it in your body yeah. so that when the camera rolls and they say action, you can then add in the like intention. Yeah. Whereas when you're practicing, it's literally just, cool, I'm doing this, 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 yeah. this. And, and it felt like there's a lot of compensating going on with the camera work and the editing and stuff like that. That's why I didn't like it. Okay. I, but as so, it's like that, this has come from a dude who's very persnickety about fight scenes. Like, I want fight scenes to look a particular way. And the movie is, it, it, it doesn't help that the movie's so perfect otherwise. That's the problem. It's like, if the movie was kind of, eh, mid, then that was the fight scene. I'd be like, whoa, those fight scenes are pretty good. Right. It's, it's that the rest of it was so perfect. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what this line means, but Stilgar got Life of Brian a bit. Marvel goofy-esque. I don't know what oh, that means. Oh, like uh, Monty Python. How? 
like with the comedy, I guess. I thought he, it he became fit. the he became the comic relief. But I don't feel like it was like overtly trying to be funny. It, it wasn't was, ribbing. Yeah. It wasn't ribbing. It wasn't it wasn't this thing where it's like haha Marvel jokes. It was like this fits with this world. It's funny because it's real. Yeah. That's like, why it's funny. Like when he was talking about the gin in the desert <laughs> and then he's like, Yeah, there, there's some gin out there and they're like really they're really spooky and then he's like no, but seriously, watch out for the gin. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I felt like he played that perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Um, He's good at that. How would you rate Timothy Chalamet? And how eager are you to watch him in future projects? Jamie Char after watching him in this one. I, I like him. I think he's a really good actor. So good. I mean, you, you watch Wonka and then you watch this and it's like, oh my God, the range. <laughs> Don't just watch this and Wonka. Watch his, um, his little interview that he did with... Uh, um, uh, Peel, uh, not Jordan Peel. Uh, oh, the lad, Mike, the lad Keegan Bible Michael one? Key. Yeah. yeah. Oh, which one? It's the Lad Bible. Lad Bible. This or that? Yes, that. Yeah. Like you watch that, and you watch him in Dune Part Two, and you watch him in Tim, in, in um Timothy Wonka. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like those are three different people, you know. Yeah, he's very versatile. Was I'm very excited to see where his career takes him. The sandy textures in the VFX make it look more realistic. Gotcha. Uh, for me, the shot of the helicopter falling in the back reminded me of Luke Skywalker's shot of him looking at the suns on Tatooine. Those are two very different feelings, but I guess I can see what you're saying. Um, one is like sorrowful and about a character who is like, who knows he's destined for much bigger things and he's stuck. Like, that's what the Luke Skywalker moment was. <laughs> this was a victorious moment where they just ass kicked hard. Um, that was a cool scene yeah. though. Now, we should probably talk about why that scene was wholly unnecessary. <laughs> like, because right after that, they show these like crazy super beams with, with these like sniper guns that they got on the side that just wreck those, those, those tanks. And I'm like, you could have just done that? And I thought maybe there was a thing where the, the characters on the ground had to clear the way. Yeah, I thought, I thought about for, that, yeah. For the beam cannons. But then, two, like, the next scene was more beam cannons taking them shits out. You don't see any dudes on the ground risking them lives. Like, it was just beam cannons and beam cannons again. And I'm like, why did they have to go? Why did they have to lose anybody? Because it looked cool as shit, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it um, was so cool. Uh, so J uh, John, John Lawan says the movie, this movie proves that streaming has nothing on scale and scope of cinemas. I, I, don't, I don't know that I would agree with that necessarily. I can see what you're saying. I mean, you certainly get more money for films that are set for theatrical distribution. Um, but I think there's a lot of good movies out there that are on streaming. It's just, it's not Dune. Well, yeah, but I think I think the argument here is that when you watch a movie like Dune, you you feel more compelled to watch it in a theater because you're not going to have that same sense of scale, even if you have like a 60 inch TV that you're watching it on, like it'll still be amazing. And I know plenty of people only watched it on streaming, but I really, I really enjoyed watching it in IMAX and I, wa I enjoyed watching it in theaters. But, you know, every time I go back to the theaters, I wouldn't mind just watching it at home. I've got a nice TV. I got a really nice sound system. I just got to pick a time that's not going to fuck with my neighbors and we'll be good. We'll be straight. But last time we went to watch Dune, there was this dude right in front of me who wouldn't stop texting on his phone, and it was right after AMC blasts your ears with, don't text. It creates a beam that ruins the experience. Don't text, don't talk on your phone, it, it, know where your exits are in case a terrorist shows up. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> And then no sooner than that message ends and Nicole Kidman bounces, this dude's on his phone on a group chat, and I'm just like, what the fuck? What are you doing, my guy? And I'm like, okay, it's fine. It's just his Warner Brothers right now. Maybe he'll just stop. And then and then he puts the phone away. He stopped. I'm like, all right, cool. And then he takes it out again, and I'm like, this motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm waiting, and it's like the montage of the intro clears, and he puts it away. And then we have that Spielberg shot where you see Timothy Chalamet for the first time in the sand and his, his rack focusing between different shit going on. And he pulls that out a third time. I'm like, dude, that is distracting. And apparently the whole theater heard I me. I heard you. And I was I'm, sitting at like, the other side. And, but he, sh he put that shit away. Yeah. Well, yours is the voice that you don't want to come behind you in the dark. Do you know what I mean? It just when you're like, my man, that's very distracting. <laughs> Is that what I said? Something like that. I was just so mad. <laughs> I was like, dude, it's like, oh, 
it makes me so angry. It's like, why did you come to the movies? Why? I understand your shit's in night mode. I can still see it, though. The, the font <laughs> is white. So, um, the movie proves uh, that I had no idea what an influence Dune on, was on Star Wars. I can see that. What? Oh, Dune, the books. Dune came first. The, yeah. The books. Okay, that makes sense. But, I mean, Star Wars was, uh, was a hodgepodge uh, amalgamation. Of different things. It was a... Uh, What's another word? Uh, 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 aff it was a confluence of things. Sure. You know? I was going to say affluence of things. It was a confluence of, of, of ideas, namely uh, the Hidden Fortress by Akira Kurosawa and Joseph Campbell's the, 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 the Hero with a Thousand Faces or something, and then I guess Dune as well. Uh, Flash Gordon is it, a lot of things. So Florence and Austin were amazing. I liked that comment about changing Chani. Um, I missed it. Uh, went away. No, no. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get back to it. Like, okay, it, it it's just... fine. It's fine. Um, but basically, how they had her express the false prophet thing, whereas in the book that was just internal monologue. I thought it was. I thought it was like actually really great for the conflict in the film mm -hmm. to have it be her and her friends be like, no, like we need to fight for ourselves. And I think it's such an interesting. Uh, way of showing things right because we see that in the world where we're all so ready sometimes like to jump on this idea of a prophet like this person is going to save us when maybe you should just be looking at yourself and and how can we mobilize so that we can save ourselves yes you know and and i liked that line where she said something about like uh i don't know if it was her or another character where it was like you know when when people are waiting for a, a, a prophet or a savior to come like they they stop doing the work themselves was basically the gist of it there was a tiny part of me that wondered if paul abdul was um paul mohadib was um just manipulating the situation when you know zendaya was like we gotta save ourselves and then he goes she's right it's like that's what you would say if you're the white savior <laughs> that's how you'd that's what you'd say so you can get in good with get in bed with her get in bed with the hottie right you know what right. i'm saying you just, yeah you're saying all the right things but you can't deny the way he looked at her though like when when she was like here's how you do the water filtration system the pee goes in here and then it, the water comes out here whatever whatever the the it was greatly done in the sound editing because it kind of her dialogue kind of fades, fades out, out yeah and it's just like the looks and as she kind of realizes he's looking at him, uh, he's looking at her, the audio comes back in and she goes, <laughs> she's like, I don't know what, like, that was some great acting, right? Because he was, he looked like he was genuinely in love with her. Yeah. And she looked genuinely, like, shy or... No, it was very sweet. Yeah. It was a very sweet moment between the two of them. I love that they had those moments between them and, like, showing the development of their relationship. Yeah, yeah, we needed that. Yeah, that I mean, I, I definitely all of that stuff got me very emotionally invested yeah. in this movie. I, you know what would have helped though is if there was a moment when, uh, he he says, um, Timothy Paul goes, you know, I don't like sand; it gets everywhere. That would have been perfect as a callback. Sure. To episode two, Star Wars. For those of you who are too young and not cool enough to know what I'm talking about. Uh, I thought the final fight was good. I just wasn't a fan of the location for a movie that was so visually beautiful with the locations. It just felt a bit strange that the fight happened in a room. Um, I can see what you're saying. I thought it still looked beautiful because they had the sun behind them. Like, there was a number of shots where, like, the sun was just coming through straight at camera. And it uh -huh. gave, a, like, a, a nice little silhouette look to the whole thing. And I thought that was neat. You know, it's almost like the sun is setting soon on the situation. So, uh, let's see. Uh, hopefully Princess Irulan. Irulan? I don't think they actually said her name in the movie, or if they did, we missed it. But yes, the princess. Princess Irulan. There's no part three. Yes. There's a part three. There's just more books. Okay, I don't know. Which... How surprised were you guys to find out that Jessica's a Harkonnen? I was very surprised. I Oh my god, the baby. So, I couldn't talk about that before, I don't think. The baby was like one of the best shots in the movie, and I I have no idea how they pulled it off. Was that a CG baby? I have no idea. Oh, the toddler. The toddler. You, when you talk about the baby, okay. I keep thinking of Anya. Baby, baby Jessica. Joy. Ba baby Jessica, right? Yeah, yeah. So like the the camera is like kind of pushing in on the baby, and the baby's like all happy, and, and then and then the light comes over because of, of Skarsgård's big body, and the baby's like, oh shit, this is not good. How did they get the baby to do that? 
<laughs> what the fuck did they give the baby? Like, how do you get a baby to not smile anymore? I know. And look sad. It was so cute. Was that CG? I don't know. Like, it, it, it's like, I... It accessed something primal in me, like, I'm afraid. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. feel right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was the combination of the music, the shadow, like, the lighting and the camera work. And the baby's acting. The baby deserves an Oscar. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, I, I, you know what? I wasn't surprised to find out that she was a Harkonnen, but I think I had read that in the, uh, the, the graphic novel or something i was like yeah it makes sense uh, tracks tracks uh, uh, those uh, bene Gesserit. austin butler is too pretty the whole movie he was serving calvin klein model he can't help his good looks okay i thought he looked weird as shit i thought he was perfect <laughs> i don't understand the hate on him i i really don't like i i thought he uglified himself perfectly for the movie because i just saw a real image of him on imdb somewhere is it this oh, this is it here let me see if i can pull this up How do I he's a good looking this? dude There's a fish one. he's cute damn it Fuck, I took it away. Okay, hold on. Let me come back to this right here. Bum, bum. There. Oh, his face is covered. How do I do this? Fuck! Okay, hold on. I got this. Can you it's... find a picture of him? No, this, I, this is not the right thing. I'll... This is a fall. It's all falling apart. Okay. Well, we got Zendaya and Rebecca Ferguson. He's gone. He's not coming back. He's not coming back. Too bad. God, God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> there. <laughs> he's so handsome. Look at that. Yeah, he's got a nice He's a handsome chin. man. So, but like, he, he, I thought he looked properly weird. He as, did look weird. In, in the movie. But like still hot. I'm sorry. I don't know where you're getting that. I thought he just looked weird. He, he, it, he looked scary to me. Um, <laughs> like in a way that I don't want to talk to that person. He might cut your throat. Well, yeah, that is the scary thing. But hey, if you're into it, you know. If you're into getting killed, then go for it. Uh, Lady Jessica was the hero of the movie. Paul was like Jon Snow. I don't want it the whole time. They tried to make her the villain. Well, here's the thing. His goal, his goal had to shift in the film, right? Because structurally, from the just like a storyteller standpoint, yeah. What is Paul's goal? His, his goal is really just be with Zendaya and like help, help help her free her people, help free her people. Yeah, that's his goal. Uh, but it had to shift towards something else, like uh, as as the story got along, because in order to properly give to her, he had to let go of her. Yeah, but the, here that that's why I think there's something as well with the whole destiny thing, right? Because sometimes it feels like he's trying so hard to, to control his trajectory, but then things happen which, like, just make it out of his control. The fact that Fade Rotha came and blew up the siege. Mm. It was like, well, shit. Now we have to go south. The whole time he's like, I'm not going south. I'm not going south. I don't want to be near the fundamentalists because they're going to latch onto this idea that I'm the Messiah and I know what's going to happen. But then when it's like, mm. we have no home now. Yeah. Like, what do you do? Yeah. And he's just forced into that situation. You know, there's a million ways they could have played that scene when they were when they were uh, blasting the temple, and all the rocks were falling into the holy water. Yeah. Like they could have done that in a completely different way, and instead they just showed it to you, and it's and it hurts. It sucks because you know what's gone into that. Well, yeah, because they you set know? it up so well yeah. in the previous scene where Stilgar shows Jessica like exactly what that water is. I just think about the different ways you could handle that, like slow motion, sorrowful music, very melodramatic. You know what I mean? And so they just show you, and it's like, ugh. It's almost yeah. worse that they just show it to you like that. Yeah. Um, it's like, no, that's like, how, because, yeah, her her reaction to it as well, where, like, she cries, and she's like, how many souls? He's like, don't waste your water. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, at the end of the movie, Achara Kirk, ah, wasting all the water. Yeah. <laughs> I would not survive. <laughs> um, let's see. Lady Jessica, uh, 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 Fade Roth as a handsome in the book. I believe I, that. Okay, so. He's like, he, he comes out and he's uh, like, everyone's screaming and cheering. And he is the prince, like, basically, who the Baron's like, yeah, he could take over because Rabin sucks. Um, <laughs> he's not doing his job. He's stupid. I felt so intimidating about Paul saying no one could defeat him. And I could see he is the bad guy after all. 
Uh, He's going to bring about a whole bunch of death and destruction, for sure. Butler played Fade exactly as everyone would expect the character to be played. A typical sociopath doing sociopathic things. Sorry, it just wasn't layered or complex, and Fade is in the books. Um, I can see that yeah, argument. I can, I, that, I, I can yeah. see where you're coming from. I didn't mind it for this, because I thought that he fit his role just right. It's like, what else would you have him do that would be interesting? It's like... And have him tell jokes like what would you have him do that didn't feel that it has to feel authentic you know and he didn't have too much screen time either to like fully develop that i think right i mean even at two hours and 40 <laughs> minutes you get the sense that there's a lot being squeezed into this film yeah it's pretty wild um uh chani cheney someone said you could say it like dick cheney yeah cheney storming off at, i i don't know in the movie he kept saying cheney yeah they say um Chani. storming off at the end doesn't mean that her relationship with paul's broken forever no i agree with you i don't think anybody thinks it's broken no forever. it's not broken forever she's just upset like <laughs> but like they broke up they broke up it's over for like now. for now for yeah now. like he, i fully believe what that he means what he says which is like i will love you forever i will love you until i die and that's beautiful but you know you watch enough stuff you read enough things and it's like yeah especially in a story like this which you know someone mentioned feels very akin to game of thrones it, i mean it is because it is about like the politics within the nobility and everything and just because you love someone but you're also a noble doesn't mean that you get to be with the person that you love because a, a marriage isn't necessarily about love it's about um you know building ties and uh bolstering your whatever you know what i mean the plotting by the bene Gesserit, the rift between the two houses and the back stepping by the emperor towards house of Trades and all seeing the son al Gaib and all gave very Game of Thrones vibes. Yeah, it I, is. I, I would it's say I, I would say it's closer to Game of Thrones than it is to Star Wars? Lord of the Rings, personally. But I, I only mentioned Lord of the Rings because it just in the terms of it being an epic. How about, how about how about how about it's just his own thing? How about that? <laughs> this is his own thing, you know. I'm just saying. Okay, yeah. I don't think you understood. What it's I meant. this generation's Dune Part Two. How about that? <laughs> sure. Um, as Paul said, she'll come back. Ha! Jabby assuming Paul's not the villain. Well, he's not yet. He's not yet. But he he was scary. When he gave that speech in the temple, mm -hmm. I was like, Ooh, this guy's scary. What do you guys think about Paul politically marrying a ruler if he's sending all the houses to paradise? Oh, I hadn't thought about that, actually. But, I mean, him marrying a ruler at least gives him some sort of legitimacy towards the throne but he still has to put the other houses in their place mm. oh um extraterrestrial unleashed says game of thrones took a lot of inspiration from lord of the rings and dune yeah i believe it um i think the main villain in the last film would be paul the messiah turning into a dictator similar to anakin skywalker but chani chani will bring him back to the blue ways Part three, does it leave on a cliffhanger? I can't stand those, just like the Spider-Verse pulled. Now we don't know the status of that movie. I really dislike the the amount of space between these movies. Yeah. But I understand it because part two was really good. I just get afraid of people dying. <laughs> <laughs> it really scares me. It's like, oh, damn it, who's old in the movie still? Uh, Christopher Walken, who's yeah. next? I'm so scared. You know, like between Matrix 2 and 3, which was shot back to back, by the way, they lost the Oracle. Like, what are you going to do? You know, between uh, this, the second to last and the last Star Wars film, uh, they lost Leia. It's it's like, it's so frustrating what could happen. Like, it's just like people die. It's like, that's life. Make the movies faster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you got to take the time to do it right. And I really appreciate that they did because then we have a movie like this to come I to, get you you know I get you it's just a risk you know I don't want Christopher Walken to go anywhere he's got to make it to the last movie mm -hmm. well I mean I don't know how much they need him anymore since he's basically gonna marry the Emperor's Bow daughter Bow at my feet <laughs> <laughs> I know he gave a very restrained Christopher Walken it, yeah. in this movie like there were hints of the Walken but he was not going full full Walken did you notice he didn't actually kiss the ring no he didn't you but, saw that, yeah. Okay, but it was the gesture. You don't. I don't think you have to like 
press your lips to it. You can just be like... Oh, I thought that was like a whole thing where you actually... I thought you have to kiss the ring. Like if you go see the Pope or whatever. Or whatever. I mean, I guess you do, but I don't know. Maybe uh, that's the point is that he didn't really kiss it, but it was enough. He, he bent the knee. Yeah. He bent the knee. I thought that... Well, I thought that was something to the audience. Like, hi, I didn't really do it. He didn't really feel it. It's just it's just a gesture. Don't hit um, stuff. It hurts so, my ears. Sorry. There's no particular villain from now on. It's just Paul messing shit up in the universe. That's not a story. <laughs> uh, agree. It was just annoying because he was ultimately what would Lady Jessica's plan anyway. Huh? What did Belly P say? I don't know. I'm mad that Alia or Alia. Is it Alia or Alia? Paul's sister wasn't in the movie. She was very present in the book. I don't know what I don't know what this person said that he's responding to. Okay, anyway. it's fine, Javi. Um, I think the main villain in the last film will be okay. I read that. Uh, there's oh my god! I said that to Achara. I said that as well. I don't know what we're talking about. I don't know. I think Dune I movies it. are amazing, but difference with Lord of the Rings is in other epics is you feel hopeful at the end of Lord of the Rings and other epics. Yes. You feel conflicted after. Dune. Yes, I agree. And I think that's what made me so upset. Was it's just that I can see the destruction that is gonna happen, and it breaks my heart because I feel like it's very reflective of the world that we live in. You know. And that's what mean? that's what makes me so sad. How do you mean? Well, you know, just that we're constantly at war, even though we're like, oh no, we we fight for peace or like we want peace and stuff, but ultimately we always resort back to to violence because that's what we know. Mm. You know? And then like you, you hear about so many people in the world who are dying as a result of things like this and then you know i apply the movie to what is going on in the real world and then like i get really sad uh it's i don't know what's going on they're talking there's an argument going on about the hobbit and dark well i think you're very far behind so if you like scroll down a lot more okay then you'll um all right fine you'll kind of catch up let me scroll down yeah there yeah. we go Quality over quantity. I disagree. Exactly. No. Quantity over quality. No, no, no. <laughs> what are your hopes for the inevitable third film? Amazing. Yeah. Greatness. I will. Okay. So I think that the second film ended in a way where it still feels like this is a complete story. And so I like that because, you know, you didn't feel like it was blue balls. Because <laughs> sometimes these, these uh, movies that have parts they end and you're like no but like it wasn't a complete arc yeah you know what i mean and this we got a complete arc of in the beginning paul is like no i i don't want to do this i don't want to feed into this thing about being the messiah and by the end he has accepted that that is going to be his role yeah so then now i think in part three we're going to see how like what re repercussions that has across the universe and with the other great houses coming into play and and then we're going to see how he can finally take over and like take over the whole world yeah yeah our, our youngs ethan did you know roger ewan who played lieutenant landville who fought austin butler also played a main role in an indian movie uh with akshay kumar called china chaka china i didn't know that but achar and i met roger ewan uh, very briefly. Yes. Right before, right before we left for India, in fact. So there's that fun fact for you guys. It's all about the Bene Gesserit for thousands of years. Bene Gesserit have, have manipulated humanity to be passive and controllable. I know, and I was wondering too. I'm like, what does that say, right? About because the Bene Gesserit are all women, and they're all women who work in the shadows. It seems like pulling the strings and manipulating the great houses and stuff either through bloodlines or like whispering in people's ears and stuff like that and telling them what to do and then but then the great messiah is a man <laughs> like what is that but also like what does that say about about women in the world and like how we operate and manipulate you know everything every we, we control everything Watch out. behind every great king is a jester is a savage woman um Belly P says, fun fact, in the book, the Baron is actually into his nephew. Oh, God. That's why there was a kiss. Oh, that's so surprising. Because I was wondering, too, because when, when they were, there was one part where, like, the Baron. I thought the kiss was, like, a, a thing for their culture. I, didn't, I thought so, too. But yeah. it's a kiss because they. 
<laughs> anyway, go ahead. What? No. But I was wondering that too, because like when, when the Baron's like walking through and you see like a lot of the, his like people, I guess. And a lot of them were like those skinny, bald headed women. But then I, I saw one and I was like, oh, I think that's, that's just a, a dude as well. So I guess he's into dudes too. So they did kind of show that. Who was that. the dude? Where was the dude? Where was the dude? You have to look carefully. Where, where are you talking about? Where, where? Which scene? It's a scene where uh, they're on the Harkonnen planet and uh, the Baron is walking through. I think he's walking up to his viewing area for the arena. And he walks past a bunch of people, like his serving girls or whatever. And one of them definitely looked like a guy, in, but in like a, in a girl's. Uh, tube top dress. All right, cool. I thought. Good for him. I might be black. I might be crazy. I don't know. Him getting his, his rocks off with everybody he likes. That's cool. Hell yeah. Um. Except I feel bad because so many of them die. <laughs> like, he just has a bad day, and you just hear the, all the screaming in the room, and then you come in, and it's like two of those poor serving girls are just dashed against the wall. Yeah, they're like praying mantises. Um. <laughs> The, I read something right here. If it's notes, I appreciate that. That means you're actually there for the movie. But if it's just texting someone, it's annoying. Even if it's notes, whatever, like, can you those, like, put it under your arm or something? It's like this. Or, like, bring a notebook. I don't know. It's annoying. It, oh, wait, is, where is it? It's, oh, we're talking about the phone thing. It's obnoxious, but I write about the movie and my brightness is way down. I do that from time to time. Sometimes I don't even take notes. Gotcha. Lady Jessica's origin is really messed up in the books when it comes to how she was conceived and who her mother is. Oh my god. Ren, I have to read the books. I live for the drama. I love this is what I love about fantasy and sci-fi is when it gets like really intricate in backstories and about like family and bloodlines and all of that. Like it I, I nerd out. I love it. I really don't like the way they did Chani in the movie. Uh, in, in the book, there's a time skip, so we don't really get any of this, but she never acted that way towards Paul. I like that we're going through it, because cinematically it works. Um, if anything, I would have dwelled on it longer. <laughs> I would have lingered on that stuff even even more, because character-wise, just from a, 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 a movie story storytelling standpoint, I feel like cinematically it works very effectively. From a book, I can see why you might skip over it, blah, 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 but like, Movies are about getting into that stuff, right? In, into the emotional stuff. It's like it's it's a cinematic experience, you know. Uh, I would have rather not skipped over that. That would have been. I, I feel like that would have been money left on the table emotionally. So nobody talks about Christopher Walken. I'm not a particular fan, but given the limited time he had, his acting was excellent. He was great. I, I liked him. It was like a very um, controlled, contained, understated performance. Understated, him. yes. Yeah. Because he's usually kind of like, you know, out there. But I liked it. Sasha uh, away. Dude, my friend next to me was using her phone and I was going to murder someone. Well, why would you murder anyone that wasn't your friend? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Silly. Your friend. She's the one. Or take her phone away. Other boy. I just got Jonathan Major flashbacks. Uh, Manas <laughs> Walker. Uh, what was the moment in Doom Part 2 that felt... Hats off for you, Jabby Nachara. Oh, God. What does that mean? Like, he loved, like, loved it? Well, that you were like, oh, my God. Yeah, that was so good. Hats off. I think from the beginning of the movie, I was feeling that. Like, not the opening montage of introducing us to these new characters, but, like, the stuff where, you know, you see Timothy Chalamet in the sand, and it's kind of rack focusing to different things. And then that whole fight was interesting. The guys, the, the first one with the you know, with the Harkonnen when they when they come down. Oh, I love when, that when shot. When they fly up, when they when fly, they fly up, up to yeah. the to the rock, I was yeah. like, oh my god, thought, here we are. I thought that was pretty cool. And then like the the way the way all that stuff was handled was just really nice. And even the way they had Timothy Shel Paul like looking for a rock just for something. And watching it a second time, I was just thinking about the cinematic language, right? Because he sees a guy, he sees the knife, and the, the the in the edit, it's like planting ideas in your brain. You understand exactly what he's, what thinking, he's thinking without the film having to say anything. Yeah. And then he sees the guy, he runs for the knife. It's like it's very exciting. Yeah. Because it's it's got your your mind working without having said a single word. Um, and the fight itself was pretty cool. Like that that was actually okay. 
you know well i like um, you know what even though and i think we talked about this when we watched the film because even though there were things that you maybe didn't appreciate technically about the fight that you felt could have been done better or they mm -hmm. could have like uh shot it better or whatever yeah. um i think the thing that we agree on is that emotionally the beats were there because in that scene in the beginning where uh, they're afraid that they're going to be discovered by the Harkonnen, um, you feel the desperation mm -hmm. in the fight. Like when he runs to get the the, the knife, yeah. it's like it's a split second decision and you're right there with him and he runs up and then he starts fighting and it's like, oh my God, this guy is bigger and like maybe he's going to overpower him, but he ends up being able to kill him and it's like, yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and same with a lot of the well, even with that final fight scene with Austin Butler that you didn't really like that much. But like I felt just kind of some of the desperation from Paul there where he's sure. like, he's really trying to get in a stab. But, yeah. you know, it's not working. Then he tries to kick him away and this, that and the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. Th the emotions were all there. Sure. Um, and then, l like I said, that that first sequence where they bust out of the sand and they take down the tank and all that, I thought was just so epic. Um, there's just a lot of really epic moments in the film just because of scale and the effort to have these wide shots where you really get a sense of things without everything being, you know, chopped up into close-ups and, like, crazy edits and stuff like that. Even the kind of dream fever sort of moments where it's, like, going into Paul's mind and what is he seeing and who's yeah. he talking to? Like, what are these visions? I thought all that stuff was cool, you know? Um, it kind of, funny enough, gave me a little bit of flashbacks of um, Iron Man uh, thinking about the coming of um, Thanos. Oh. Yeah. You know, because, like, he has a vision of a bunch of people dead because of Thanos. Yeah. And so it's it's just kind of cool, you know. It's this generation's Avengers. Uh let's see. My f I don't understand Chani trying to undermine Paul and Lady Dosica because they be killed. She don't care about that. <laughs> I, you obviously come on. <laughs> like there's this great bit in um uh Kevin Hart talking about how he got into an argument with his lady while they're in the car, and she starts hitting him. And he's like, "You hit me! I crash. We both dead. <laughs> Just kill your side. Don't kill my side." <laughs> like, but like that, it, she she's in she's that like riled up. She doesn't care about the consequences. What she cares about is she's losing her man, her boo, you know, to this other bitch. <laughs> like that's how she feels. Oh no, but I think I think it's like. Uh, Ren is more talking about how in, in the beginning, I think, um, how if she's saying like, oh, he's not the Messiah, um, then why would they keep them around at all? Then Paul would be dead. They would just throw him out in the desert with his mother. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Either way. I think. Anyway. I don't know. Um, then, I, then take back everything I just said. <laughs> I think what I said is still valid. Sure. <laughs> Jabby, I'm with you on the phone in the theater, dude. Seriously, takes it. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, I feel like we've covered a lot of what we need to cover in this discussion. Uh, yeah. I know. What? What are we talking about? It's okay. They're having a private conversation. Please. Oh, this is a totally different thing. I yeah. really don't know how the baby grew, grew so fast in her belly. It's been months. Um, it did feel like the baby, like one second you didn't see her belly, and then all of a sudden it was like, "Holy, are you ready? Are you about ready to pop now, Lady Jessica?" Maybe the the worm juice, you know, sped things up. Yeah, it could be. We don't know how long it takes in this world. Maybe it's two months. True. Someone was saying that the audiobook is good, but I, I've nearly downloaded the audiobook multiple times because I'm really into my audiobooks right now. Um, but I keep seeing reviews that say that the narration is terrible. And like, I just cannot stand to listen to someone badly read a, a fantasy or a sci fi. No, it's got to be good. So, G. Paul. Um... I'm glad that you like the fight, and I'm glad most people seem to, to, to really like the fight. It's that as someone who has studied a lot of fight scenes and, and performed them and shot them, edited them, you can see one in the short film that we have out right now, Love Punch Kill. Not that that's like... I mean, the, 
even with the mistakes in Dune, I think Dune's is gonna look better because oh, they yeah. got they got millions of dollars yeah. behind their shit. But um, you know, um, what I'm saying is there's a lot of moments where I I'm pulled out of the harrowingness of it because I can see the actors stalling. That just it it it, it just messes it up for me. You know where if and I I even see it a little bit in Love Punch Kill to be honest with you there's like a moment or two where I see an actor hanging and I'm like oh fucking if I could just you know what I mean like and so I I, I tried my best to m m fix that by removing frames so it feels like it's almost immediate as right. opposed to a weight like like a, an arm hanging there for a block to meet it and so they didn't do that in Dune Part 2 if an actor held his hand there and then the block came they didn't fix it because I saw it and I saw it twice because, you know, I'm well, like, I guess it's harder to do as well, especially when they're doing the like one going through on know? the one it would have been harder. But on the fight with Austin Butler, they could have fixed it. Sure. Um, you know, there was there was a one where where Zendaya is like running in the battlefield where she's wearing the oblivion outfit and she's like messing people up. The last guy is like w waiting to hit her. And I'm like, they just needed to shoot that again. They needed to. They, the timing is off. They needed. To, they needed to like stop, like run through it again. Like, what is the problem here? What is the problem in the timing where that's not lining up? Give him something to occupy him until she's there, because him just standing there looking stupid. It's just like it's not good for his reel. I honestly didn't <laughs> notice though. <laughs> you know? So anyway, um, I mean, yeah, it's cool. Whatever. The, most people aren't gonna see it. I think that the way. I think that they went that way because instead of her having kids, the princess will have his kids. Yeah. Mm, all right. Yeah, with them with them breaking up because like, Ch Chani can't be the mother of his children. Yeah. <laughs> she can be the love of his life. Um, the baby worm was so creepy, and I was like, "That's when they small." <laughs> <laughs> A creepy snake, yeah. It was sad that, and then you realize, like, oh, you got to kill baby worms to get the water of life. <laughs> sad times. Um, yeah, but it seems like there's a lot of them. For them to have that much of the juice all the time, like, Jessica got it, and then Paul got it, like, right afterwards. Yeah, I know, but they're not drinking the entire bottle of juice. You die. They did the ritual twice. I know, but like, surely, what, you can't keep the leftover? I guess not. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, you gotta kill a whole worm just for that little juice. What a waste. We need to grow those worms nice and big so you can get like a great big grandfather worm to take you into battle. Ain't no way that like, you know, midget sensei lady is gonna be able to take on a big ass worm. No, then you set them free. What are you talking about? No, I'm like, you gotta, you can't just keep killing the babies. How are you gonna get the big worms? Out there in the wild. What is your question? Stop killing the babies. How are you gonna get the juice then? Save the juice. Don't drink, don't waste an entire bottle of juice. Maybe you need to drink the whole thing to get like no, the full vision. Don't. What if you only get like a quarter of the vision, then you're fucked. <laughs> I know there's something that's gonna happen. What? I don't know. It cut out before I could get there. I'm. A, I woke up. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Nomo says I know the timing for the fight sometimes is awkward. But that's what I'm saying. Conceptually, I think they mostly executed it really well because I think for most people, myself included, we're not gonna notice. And it's just so thrilling to I watch. know you're not going to notice, Achara. Like, you keep saying that. Like, it's new information. I know. It's But it doesn't stop it from being annoying. It's just like... it. Look. Th there is no other film I can think of that comes this close to being perfect except for maybe Schindler's List. It's like, how many films can you think of that, like, end to end, there's, like, no mistake. It's so just spot fucking on perfect except for the fight scenes. To like nothing else i can't think there's not too many movies that are like that like any nolan film his no his movies are, are amazing but they're always flawed there's always like a big thing in the middle where i'm like what why didn't you fix that <laughs> like okay um uh, for instance you know uh, uh, tim uh, timothy chalamet 
Um, uh, uh, all right, all right, all right. What's his fucking name? Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. Um, like, okay, so they get all the way to the wormhole before dude decides to explain to him what a wormhole is. Like, what? The, what? <laughs> How did you not understand this at a script level that that's bad? That's so stupid. Like, before you leave Earth, you, you would want to explain what the fuck we're doing when we get there. This is how you wormhole, bitch. Like, why would you explain it right before you go into there? Sure. That's so stupid. Yeah. And and and, and so in Inception, there's this whole thing with, um, I don't want to dead name her. So, but, but. Uh, Elliot Page. Elliot Page, yeah. So, or him. There's a whole thing where where Ellie, or at the time it was Ellen Page, you know, with Leonardo DiCaprio, they, they're going through the dream sequence thing, and he's explaining like you can't make shit up on the fly like that because then the person's gonna wake up and whatever, whatever is gonna be bad, and El Ellen Page goes okay, okie dokie, and so she just never breaks the rule, but like there's a scene when they enter, uh, um, what's his name's mind uh, from Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy's mind. And there's a train that just goes through the middle of the city. There are clearly like security guards in his brain. It's like, okay, now it's time to just make shit up. Cause like, you should hit the fan anyway. You might as well just start turning the city on itself. It was like, like the movie didn't quite like go as far as it could have. You know what I mean? Um, don't get me started on Dark Knight. <laughs> oh, apparently the worms don't die. They're just wil milking them. So thank God. Like, they look pretty dead. It, yeah, I thought she they were. Them shits. I thought it was being drowned. I was yeah. so concerned because I was like, "But they live in the desert. They probably don't like water." <laughs> like, you know, she's like drowning. So they never, eat, they water. never accidentally eat a cactus. Maybe, but like, they're, it's not like they're swimming in a pool of water. I guess it's fair. Yeah, where would you find that? There's not. Well, I'm, I'm sure there are desert oases. But anyway, I thought that you would enjoy the. Uh, who is it? Someone said about uh, Jessica changes in the book. She changes the water of life so that it can be taken by everyone, and then they all take it and they have an orgy. What? <laughs> That's in the book? Yeah, apparently. You want to read the book now? No. Oh. <laughs> But like, this is like, what? Is the book like PG-13 up until then? I don't know. That's so random. I don't think it's a PG-13 book. It's a grown-up book. There's no F-words. There's no, like, entrails. There's an orgy. <laughs> but what book is that in? I don't know. Now Jabby, Jabby wants to know. <laughs> Jabby needs to know oh, yeah, about this cause, orgy. Because adult films are so hard to come by these days. <laughs> Anyway, I, think I love this. Frank Herbert's overarching message from his Dune books is the peril of following charismatic leaders. I believe it. Okay, Godfather Part One. He says Godfather Part One and Part Two are perfect movies. There is a scene oh my where God. where Sonny is going after um what's her name's Talia Shire's husband. Just because the, the 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 blows didn't connect, I don't think. But I'm talking about everything from story to technical to music, everything. Okay. Godfather what, Part 1 is one of my favorite films of all time. But there is a scene where Sonny is going after Talia Shire's husband in the streets. He throws a garbage can at him. Yeah. And there's a part where he tries to punch him in the face. And it's like, it misses. Like, it's, 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 it's like, I, I can't show. It's like, it misses by this much in the movie. He throws a punch and, and the bad guy goes, oh. <laughs> I'm like, what? He didn't touch you. And every time I watch the movie, I'm like, he didn't touch him. What's he doing? What's, that, what's happening there? Yeah. You know, I can't say anything. Oh, Godfather 2, the very end of Godfather. Did you see Godfather 2 yet? I did see Godfather okay. 2. It's, at the, a, it's at, out at, on the at, channel. At the end of Godfather 2, while I love the movie, <laughs> I love that movie. It just was like, I knew, I knew that Marlon Brando was not in the next room. I can see that from the, it's just, I don't hear him. Everyone's like, Going, yay, it's his birthday. I'm like, who are you cheering for? He's not there. <laughs> he's not there. You dummy. He's not there. I know he's not there. And so it's like, it's close. It's close to perfect. That's what I'm saying. Everything's got to have a thing. It's almost like um, Native American basket weaving. It's like only God is perfect. So you got to put a stitch in. Yeah. Right? 
Dune stitches are the fight scenes. They it's say like, that in Islam as well. And like that's why you will always find one flaw in, in a carpet. They put it in there because only God is perfect. Right. And in Love Punch Kill. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, um, someone said something about studio interference with Alia. Why? They couldn't afford to have Anya Taylor Joy for more than like a day of work. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I. I, I didn't really get it. <laughs> I love that Johnny's like Sonny's punches had force behind it. He still hit even when he doesn't hit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's the air. Saving, I guess Saving Private Ryan is pretty close as well. I mean that movie was remarkable. Um, I'd have to watch it again. I'm sure I could find something. <laughs> yeah. But, He's not called Jabby Nitpick Koe for nothing. I don't. I. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Saving Private Ryan's pretty, pretty, pretty perfect. Like that's a pretty. Perfect film. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. The only thing I would criticize, oh maybe, my god, here it comes. Maybe if I if I had to pick, if I had to pick, is when it comes back to the present. I didn't love that stuff. I loved everything else in the movie. Okay. Yeah, that that was. It was just like that's cool. It it fits. Um, someone is saying uh, Marlon not being there at the end of the at the movie is better, and I'm like, no, they made it work. <laughs> they. They, Marlon Brando refused to show up. That's what happened. Even though he decided to reprise his character years later in a mock version of, of that character. Um, there's a whole movie where... Anyway, I'm not going to get into it. it. It bothered me that Marlon Brando wasn't there in, at the end of part two. At least his voice. Just his voice would have been enough. Just yeah. his voice. You know? Um, let's see. Or Spider-Man. Well, of course, I've got it right. Whiplash is my favorite film. Absolutely perfect. That's your favorite film. That's my too. favorite film, yeah. No, not anymore? No, it is my favorite film. I'm just thinking if there's anything wrong in it. I'd have to watch it again. I can't think of anything. It's like I had. I can't think of a complaint that I had about that film at all. Like it was so damn good. I can't I can't think of a complaint I have about it. That's, so that's what I'm saying. It's like it should have been better than Whiplash. <laughs> Um. All right. Cool. No. Uh. No more perfect movies than Saving Private Ryan. Even Predator managed to be that. Is, does anyone else love the scene where Paul is seeing an ocean? That was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. What is this? But pre his presence is there. Oh, uh, yeah. he's talking about Godfather, Godfather Part Two. Yeah. I I disagree with that so hard. You know, because 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 um, uh, Francis Ford Coppola tried to say the same thing, and I'm like, no, he's not. I can feel he's not there. It's you're <laughs> making this up just to justify it. You know, he's not there. It still hit me though. So well, Al Pacino's acting is so darn good, and just the framing of him by himself, alone, mm -hmm. always alone, no matter always what he alone. does. Poor Michael. Just, no matter what he does, he can't get it right. No. He's always alone. He tries to serve his country. He is alone. He joins the mafia. He is alone. Like, what the? He can't win. Why? <laughs> his family leaves him. He he leaves alone. for Italy to, like, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Be a man. Right? He tries to do the right thing. And then his wife gets blown up in a car. He's like, ah, I am alone again. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know? So. Poor guy. Let's see. The way he went back to what's her name though, Diane Keaton. That was some. That was like. That was some real like pimp shit. Like he just like. <laughs> it's like yeah, sorry, I didn't talk to you for like a year. Yeah. So let's, let's just like, pick let's, up where we left off. Yeah. Should we get married? Oh, you got a boyfriend? <laughs> we got that covered. We'll take care of that real fast. <laughs> so I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Interstellar and Dune is my favorite. Are my favorite films. Interesting. Dune two. Yeah. Dune two. Gotcha. Stop saying spoilers, y'all, in case the future movie includes them. Or if they want to read the books. It's fine. I'll 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 read the books. And well, if you guys are saying that the audiobooks are okay, I'm I may just do that because it's easier I love reading, but it's easier for me to do audiobooks right now than reading because I can I can listen to the book while I'm like cleaning my house or doing chores, you know? Johnny says, hopefully we get Jebby fighting in Love Punch Kill 2 and that'll make a, the sequel a perfect movie. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's going to be a Love Punch Kill Part 2, firstly. I think that it, it, that's it and it's done. 
It's not even getting enough views to begin with to warrant there being a part two. But uh, furthermore, my character is a bitch. He ran off. That was the point. <laughs> he saw some gangster ass dudes. Is like, I don't need this problem. And he left. He's not coming back. Or maybe he'll come back later to buy a shirt. Finally. Yeah. For his ex-girlfriend who's now his girlfriend. Sure. Again. I don't know. <laughs> that was just there for the audience. Yeah. Um, yeah, as Manas Walker, or Walkar, sorry, was asking how we'd feel about this being a series instead of a movie. I think it would be great as a series. Like, there's so much to mine from um, in terms of story. So I'd be totally down to watch a Dune series. I, I, Only if the quality is good, though. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. No? How is that going to turn out? Is it? How's it gonna turn out? The politics. Yeah, how's it gonna turn out though? Like, is it's not gonna be the same. And I, I, I feel like we're all gonna be like, yeah, it's okay though, cause it's a TV show. I'm like, no, it's not. It's not okay. Stop. <laughs> Stop this. I don't want it. Um, I just feel like it's not gonna be the same. There's no way you can get it to be anywhere near the same. No, I mean, obviously budgets and stuff are going to be different, but I'd still be interested to see. Actually, you know what? Maybe they can make it work. They got, they got, oh, you they, changed your mind they now? Got, they got AI, you know? They can just tell the machine to do it. <laughs> make a good TV show. <laughs> In the world of Dune. Make it work. Yeah, make it work, AI. Do yeah. better. Um, All right, you guys. I think we've covered the crap out of this, so. Loved uh, it. Thanks. Even if Jabby did nitpick the crap out of it. Well, not the crap, just a little. I nitpicked a couple things. Yes. But um, apparently many people who studied in jazz school hated, didn't enjoy Whiplash. Well, naturally. Yeah. I mean, a lot of Hispanics probably didn't appreciate West Side Story when it first came out. Like. I don't know. You know what I mean? Well, because there's a lot of uh, uh, brown face in the movie. And oh. so. But it's a classic. So. You <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, yeah. So. Um, uh, what was it called? Um, Soyonara with Marlon Brando, speaking of whom, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that film won Best Picture. And the actress in it, when the Asian actress won Best Actress, and is like, that was a bad Japanese accent. That was really, that was like, if a white person tried to do a stereotypical Asian accent, that's what her sounded like. Right. And she won Best Actress. I, I, I'm like, it makes me wonder how many nitpickers, how many jabbies of that era were like, hey, yo, like, that's not good. That's a bad accent. <laughs> like, Po! <laughs> you had the noodle dream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging with us, being goofy and stuff. That's it. Uh, love y'all. Uh, thanks for the super chatters. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for the chats. We loved it. Yes. This, this, was, this has been fun. It's been real. Thanks again. I'm Jabby Koei. That's a Char Kirk. Goodbye. Peace out. And Taro Adun.